So this is the smallest Android projector I have come across in recent times. It's made completely from a metal body. You've got HDMI input, so you can hook up your own game console, power button, ventilation. You've got your infrared port, a full-size USB-A, headphone jack, power socket. You've got ventilation, built-in speaker, focus adjustment, and your lens on the front. Not only that, you've got touch controls on the top, including a trackpad. So incredibly portable, compact, built-in batteries are completely wireless, portable usage. You can take this anywhere with you and start projecting anything you want. And I believe it's running Android 7.1 built in. And inside the box, you will find a whole bunch of accessories, beginning with user manual, HDMI cable, a power supply, and I'll let you read the voltage, standard remote control, a small compact remote control, which is powered by two AAA batteries not included in the box. So nice compact remote included. That is an infrared remote. You're also getting a small compact metal tripod with extendable legs. And as you don't have a tripod thread underneath the projector, you get one of these. So it's basically a mobile phone holder, but when you stick it on like this, you can easily place the projector securely in place of so the projector is secure and it's not going anywhere and that will give you a mini tripod to place this on so i just briefly switched on the power to show you what to expect immediately let's make some space on this desk so it looks like we've got the android loading screen yep i just focused the image using the focus adjustment dial on the side and i do need to switch the lights off a bit wow that's actually quite visible and my hands are shaking for some reason but that is actually quite visible even with the light on. Now, if I was to switch the lights off, if I switched a few lights off, you can see that looks very clear and bright. Just trying to focus adjust it a little bit more. There you go. Wow, that is pretty neat, guys. I'm impressed already. You do have automatic keystone correction as well. And the controls on the top work fine. You can see there's a mouse moving around and I can open up any of these. I haven't even connected to Wi-Fi, so we can go to settings and you can connect to Wi-Fi, etc. Yeah, already impressed with the brightness of this. All right, let me just quickly run you through the specs. So this is an LED video projector. Brightness is 70 ANSI lumens. Native resolution 854 by 480. Contrast ratio is 350 to one. You've got manual focus and automatic keystone correction. The maximum optimal screen size is 100 inches. You've got mini HDMI input for your game consoles, your TV box. And I forgot to mention, this is actually a mini HDMI to regular sized HDMI cable included for your convenience. So you don't have to go and buy any adapter. Out of the box, you've got everything you need. Now there is a 3,300 milliamp hour battery built in, which will give you around 1.5 hours of battery life. You've got Android 7.1, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth version 5, and you can see that the Android is a proper Android TV box setup going in here. So mini projector plus Android TV box built in. So without any further ado, let's get this set up in a dark room and check out the system menus, go over some movie trailers. And I will also be connecting my PlayStation 4 via the HDMI cable and we will check out some gaming on this as well. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the projector set up and the first thing I like to do is test out that fan noise. So standing right next to the projector, you can expect a fan noise of around 40 to 41 decibels. Now, if we move one meter away, from the projector, then the fan noise drops down to around 35 to 36 decibels. All right, so the projector is powered on and ready to go. So we are set up around three meters away from the wall in front of us, and we are projecting 100 inches. First thing I wanna mention is the remote control does not work unless you point it backwards at the projector, as you can see. If you point it forward, it doesn't have that field of view. Now let's talk about the system menus. So as soon as you switch on the power, you will be presented with Android home screen. So this is Android 7.1. You've got large fixed shortcuts here for YouTube, Netflix, Google Play. You've got file manager, settings, cleanup, and you've got screen mirroring and your apps. And if you wanna to switch to HDMI, just select this icon and it will switch to the HDMI port and then you'll be able to play your game console or TV box or whatever it is you have plugged in in HDMI. 
So first of all, we're gonna have a look at the settings. So this projector does support five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Um, other subcategories under network, you've got Wi-Fi hotspots, ethernet, and Bluetooth. Common settings, sound, brightness, keyboard, um, date, time, and language. If we go down, you've got your projection mode. So ceiling, rear ceiling, front and rear. Keystone correction is already set to automatic by default. But if you wanted to manually fine tune things, you can do that as well. Then you've got your developer options and a few more options at the bottom. Now you don't have any audio or video presets. So what you see is what you get. You can't change the color contrast. Um, you can change the brightness as I showed you, but you cannot change anything else. The internal Android does have the Google Play Store, which is another plus point. So you can download your favorite games and apps. Um, I also want to quickly show you the specs. So if we go to advanced settings, it will bring up the full Android settings. Go all the way to the bottom, hit about. We've got system storage info. So we have 16 gigs of internal storage available and we have used just over five gigs at the moment. Uh, memory looks like one gig of RAM. I'm going to open up YouTube and we're going to play a few trailers and we see how the internal system performs when streaming YouTube. And this is a 480p projector. If you leave it on automatic, it tries to stream in 1080p and then you just get a whole bunch of dropped frames. So the best thing to do is either select 480p or select 720p. I wouldn't go any higher. So this is 720p streaming on YouTube. Zero drop frames, so it seems to be handling well. Uh, looks pretty good too. Okay, pause it on Mr. Lizard, as I always do. Um, the lizard looks quite blurry from here. Um, it's not as sharp as what we're used to. I'll give you guys a close up anyway. So Mr. Lizard is not looking as good as we're used to seeing him. The colors and contrast are okay. If we zoom in now, you can see that uh, slight pixelation when you go close. Um, I'm gonna switch the light on now. Let's do the light test. You can still see everything on the screen, but it's not going to be an enjoyable experience. So yeah, this so this projector is definitely not suitable for daytime use. So yeah, that's more like it. Let's go ahead and play a few more trailers uh, and see what this thing can do. So quite convenient to see that Netflix does come pre-installed uh, and ready to use. But you are, of course, limited to SD quality streaming. So that should give you a rough idea of what it's like to stream using the internal Android system. Now we're going to switch over to HDMI for some PS4 gaming. So here is my PS4 connected to HDMI. You can see all the small game icons here. They are all... Uh, blurry the menus don't look as good as they usually do and that's expected this is an SD quality projector even this small text at the top um, is slightly fuzzy the
So there you have it guys, another portable DLP video projector reviewed on the channel. Pros and cons are up on the screen. This one could have been so much more. I'm disappointed in the lack of brightness and therefore dark movie scenes don't look great and you're getting a real lack of detail due to the low resolution. And the projector is only usable in dark environments. Remote control is not great. Built-in speakers are quite low volume. There are, however, a few good points. The metal build quality is nice. Having full Android built in is also a plus point. Support screen mirroring and you have the Google Play Store. Animated movies and games look okay. They're quite usable. Bottom line, I feel the price is a little high for what you're getting and it might be a better option to maybe pick up something a little bigger that offers a better user experience than this unless of course you absolutely need the tiniest projector that fits in your pocket and you don't mind that low resolution then this might be an option for you i hope you found this video useful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one peace